Okay, lovely. So welcome to four steps to reaching your goals in 2014. This is the, I want you to get to know the webinar control panel. If you haven't been on a webinar with me before, there's a control panel on the side. I see a lot of you are typing in the questions box so you know how it works. Um, you've already told me that you can hear me and see my screen. Use the questions box for anything. I want this to be very interactive. If you've got a microphone and you want to speak to me directly, I'd love that. So um, I'd love it if you, if you could speak to me. It's much better than speaking to a blank screen, I can tell you. <laughs> And just shut off all distractions. I really encourage you to close the door, switch off Facebook, switch off your email, and just give yourself this gift of some time to put some thought into what you want to make happen this year. And pay, pay, pay close attention, because this is very, very important. I don't know if you've ever heard that quote by, I think it's Jim Rohn, who, who died a couple of years ago. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I, w I don't want that to happen to you. So I really want you to encourage you to close off your distractions, to close off all your other tabs on your computer, shut the door, let everyone know around you that you're just not going to be available for the next, oh, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes while we're together on this webinar. And, um, you know, just pay attention and give yourself this gift. So with that said, let's get started. I can make this work. So here's a shocking statistic. Just 8% of people achieve their New Year's resolutions. This is according to Forbes magazine. When I was doing some research for my slides here for this webinar, I came across this shocking statistic. And I think that's quite sad, really. But I mean, I'm going to ask you why do you think that is. So let's just take a look at that. Here's what I think. Um, from the research that I've done, the reason why pe only 8% of people reach their goals. They've set overwhelming or big makeover goals, you know, too big, too big goals that are, are frankly unattain unattainable within the time frame. They tend to focus on the big goal instead of the small steps and tasks which lead to the big goal. So they don't chunk them down. They just think, oh, I want to make a million dollars, or I want to make a hundred thousand, or I want to make two hundred and fifty thousand, and they fail to chunk it down into the small tasks and the small steps. The goal is often vague and unspecific, so they don't know when they re reach the goal. Um, I have this a lot when people come to me for help. They say, oh, well, I want to make more money. But what is more money? How much is it? How much is the figure? It's really important to be specific when you're setting a goal, setting your intention to achieve a goal. And of course, by being vague and unspecific, they often don't know when they've reached the goal and feel that they have failed. I, mean, I, I don't know about you, but we, we have a tendency to focus on what we did wrong or what we failed at rather than celebrate what we did well at, what we did good at. It's, it's a, a common human trait. <laughs> and we're all human, of course. And they don't really know what they truly want, and there's no accountability. The goal is often not in alignment with what they truly want, and there is no accountability. Accountability is crucial. So the slides are going slightly haywire, but never mind. Let's just press on. Oh, there we go. So why should you listen to me? I'm looking at the people on the call tonight. Some of you uh, already know me, um, but many of you don't. So if you just bear with me while I introduce myself and just let you know why you should listen to me. I mean, who the heck is Yvonne Halling anyway? And why am I talking to you here today? Okay, so I run a bed and breakfast business in the heart of the Champagne region in France. We came here to France almost 20 years ago. And in 2001, we were living in um, nearby Epinay, which is the town uh, near where we live. And my husband had this marvelous job with a little champagne company that you may have heard of called Moet, Moet et Chandon. And he had this fabulous job, and he was traveling around the world and staying in top-class hotels and drinking vintage champagne. And little old me was back home alone with our two small daughters, and I was quite frankly a bit bored. 
So I saw a couple of people doing bed and breakfast and I looked at what they were doing and I, I thought to myself, well, you know, I can do that. I mean, how hard can it be? <laughs> and it looks easy. So I thought, well, I love entertaining people and I love meeting people. And I was really lonely and isolated here in France at that time. In 2001, we didn't really have the Internet. We, had, didn't, we didn't have, certainly didn't have Facebook. And so I felt very isolated and cut off from the English speaking world, because as you probably realize by now, <laughs> I live in France, but I'm not French, I'm British. So we opened a little bed and breakfast business and it was really just for me a little hobby business and we didn't really have to worry about how much it paid because we had this lovely job that my husband was enjoying and we, we, we had his salary. But then all that changed in 2004, after nine years at Moet, he lost his job. There was a big corporate reorganization, you know, and restructuring like they do. And a whole swathe of people got laid off. And we were unfortunately a victim of that. So our girls at that stage were then, were then 12 and 14. And we thought, well, and they had grown up in France, even though we're all British. And we thought, well, what shall we do now? So we went back to the UK in 2005 and because we thought we'd have a better prospect of finding another job. Um, we just wanted to have a British experience as a family before the girls got too old and left school. Well, it was a disaster for us and one thing led to another and we got into serious financial difficulties. We lost three businesses, uh, the last one in the crash of 2008. And the last straw was when the rented house we were living in in the UK caught fire and we were left homeless and living in a caravan. So we, the house that we'd rented out in France, the, the house that I'm speaking to you from right now, we had rented it out when we went back to the UK and the tenants had left. So there we were in the UK living in a caravan thinking, what the heck are we doing here when our house in France is empty? So we came back home to France in 2009 and things had got worse and we were in big trouble financially and the bailiffs were coming for our house because we hadn't paid the mortgage. Oops. Let me go back. And so somebody had to do something. And I don't know if you've ever had one of those days where you thought to yourself, oh, gosh, I can't go on like this. Well, I had one of those days back in 2009. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought to myself, somebody has got to do something. And so I set about building a B&B &B business. And I had absolutely no idea what I could do with this business because nobody I knew was making any money from it. I didn't know how to do it. I only knew how to run it as a hobby. But I got really good at marketing and I got to understand how this business really works. And within the first year, I had uh, quadrupled my pittance of an income of less than 10,000 and in the second year I grew it to over six figures with just four rooms. I then won a four, three hospitality awards from TripAdvisor, I'm sure you've got one or two of these yourself, which puts us in the top 5% of all accommodation providers in the world. So that's testimony to the service that I provide here. Um, and then I was very blessed and proud to have won a, a coveted online marketing award um, in 2013 for my marketing in my bed and breakfast business. Um, I wrote a book called Bed and Breakfast Magic, How to Transform Your B&B &B into a Booming Six-Figure Business, and that's available on Amazon. And then people started asking me for help. Other B&B &B owners started asking me for help. I was uh, invited to present at the Mid-Atlantic Innkeepers Association Conference in 2013. And I presented at the Professional Association of Innkeepers International uh, last year in 2014. And I coach bed and breakfast owners around the world now, coach, mentor and consult with bed and breakfast owners around the world. So that's a bit about me. So just so you know who's speaking to you and um, so that you know that I'm qualified to speak to you because, I, you know, it's there's a lot of people out there offering advice and information. And I just want you to... Be aware and oops, reassure yourself that I didn't just roll out of bed one morning and read a few marketing books and think, oh, I can do this. I can help other hospitality businesses. This is all proven and tested strategies, things that I have done myself. I do it myself. I still have a B&B &B business. 
And these are things that I, I have tested myself and proven it's not just theory. Okay, so I want you to ask questions and interact as much as possible. Pop your questions in the questions box. I'll come to them a little bit later on, but please do interact with me as much as, as, much as you possibly can, because it just makes it more fun. <laughs> so let's get started. Four steps to easily reach your goals in 2015. We're already in 2015. Isn't that amazing? It's just amazing how the time goes. So the first step then, and I want you to get to your handouts, refer to your handouts um, now. So if you can get them ready, um, click on that link that I sent you. If you don't have them, just have a pen and paper ready, because um, I'd like you to write down what did you do that worked in 2014, and how can you build on that? So I'm going to give you a few minutes. I'll see if I can find some music, um, but I may just hum. Um, but I really want you to write down what worked for you in 2013, uh, for, uh, in 2014, I'm sorry, and how you can build on that. So just take a few minutes to do that. I've just got my iPad, so I'm going to put some music on for you. It's like being in the room together, isn't it lovely? So when you've written that down, just tap in the questions box um, that you've done it so that I'll know that we can move on. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. Can you hear the music now? Brilliant. Okay, brilliant. So let's go on to step number two. What did you do that didn't work in 2014? And how can you make sure not to do that again? What did you do that didn't work in 2014? And how can you make sure not to do that again? Because not everything works, does it? Let's be honest.
So take a moment to write that down on step two, either on your notepad or in your handouts. I'm going to pop this lovely music on again. When you've done that, just pop a little note in the questions box so that I can see that you're ready to move on, please. Done? Great. 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 Brilliant. Great. Pause the music. Let's go on to step three. So what do you want? What do you want? Oops, it's just going berserk here. Just stop, please, stop, please. Okay, well, let's go back to what do you want? Is it more money? Is it, oh, goodness. Is it more money? Can you see my screen? Because the slideshow, I think it's been affected by the new moon. <laughs> so it's going berserk. So I hope you can see. What do you want? Do you want more money? Do you need to fill your rooms in the low season? Do you want to stop paying commissions to OTAs? And I've put these, th these three things down as three examples of what you might want. It, that may, may, may not be, be right for you. But I've put these three things down because I, um, I believe that these are what most people want. When they come to me for help, it's either one of these three things and sometimes three of them. So whatever it is you want in 2015, I want you to put that down for step three. OTAs, sorry Sheila, OTAs are online travel agencies. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting carried away with acronyms. So online travel agencies, okay? So these are the things that, that most people come to me, you're welcome Sheila, um, most, most people come to me for help with. So if, if that isn't what you want, then put down what you do want under step three. So if, if you had everything your way in 2015, what would you like to have? What is it you want? Just give you a couple of minutes for that with a little bit of music.
So when you've written that down, just pop that in the questions box that you've done it. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So if we go with these three examples, and if this isn't what you want, and I see some of you put in the questions box that they, you want different things, you want to travel, um, and you want more time, and really that's just um, that's just personal to you. So I want you to, to go along with this train of thought. I'm going to give you the next step in getting what you want based on these three examples. So I want you, I want you to use the, ne the train of thought to put down what it is that you, uh, what this means to you. So why do you want, why do you want that? Okay, so I want you to think about why you want um, to have more time. What would that mean to you? If you want to travel to other countries, why do you want, if you want to travel more, why do you want that? What would it mean? If you want more time, what do you want more time for? And what would that mean if you had more time? Using our example here, if you want more money, it could be because I want to have a holiday with my family. If you want to fill your rooms in the low season, it could be because I want to feel more secure that during the low season I can make money. And if you want to get away from the OTAs, the online travel agents, it could be because you feel like the OTAs have a hold on you and you feel like you're out of control of your business. And these are just examples to help you with the train of thought. So if you want more free time or whatever else you've put down for, step, uh, for the previous um, question, I want you to think about why you want it. And then moving on to the, the next slide, again, following the train of thought, what does that mean for you if you had that? If you had more time and you know why you want it, what you're going to do with the time, what would that mean to you personally? How would you feel? Would you feel more relaxed? Would you feel like you've made a better connection, bonded with your family or your loved ones? And following on from my examples that I'm giving you here, which may or may not be right for you, why do, why do you want to make more money? Because I want to have a holiday with my family, because I want to connect again with my family to have some experiences and create memories. Do you see how that train of thought has come from the thing that you want down to what it means to you? I hope that makes sense. And then if I wanted to make more money in the low season because I want to feel more secure that I can create money on demand and get bookings whenever I want, because it means, it means that to me and it makes me happy, makes me feel peaceful, gives you confidence when you can, you can make things happen by yourself, you're not reliant on someone else. And then it, following on our, our third example, I want, to I want to get away from the online travel agencies because I feel at the mercy of them and I feel trapped by them. And then what that means for you is not relying on OTAs, means that I would feel in charge and in control of my business and be able to keep all the profit for myself, which brings me peace. So going back to your thing that you want, follow that train of thought. What, what do you want, why do you want it, and what would that mean for you? And when you've done that, I'll just pop the music on again. When you've done that, just pop a little done in the questions box and, so that we can move on.
great, brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so do you see, um, I'm going to try and go back to the big screen, but it may go wrong, but never mind. This is live TV, folks. Now you are emotionally, I hope you are emotionally connected to your goal because it means something to you. It's not just something that you feel that you should have. Very often we set goals that we think we should set or like we should do this and we should do that based on what someone else says. But if you're not emotionally connected to your goal, then you're really not going to do anything about it. But I want you to feel emotionally connected now to the thing that you said you wanted and why you want it and what it means for you. So step four then is what's going to happen if you don't get what you want in 2015. So on your handouts or on your paper, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. Just write down what's going to happen if you don't get what you want in 2015. What, what would that feel like for you? So just take a moment to do that. That's great. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Michael. We will wait for the others to say, great. Thank you, Marie. Thanks, Joe. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. See if I can make this thing move. So let's just go back one. So the last thing I want you to do is I want you to do what's called a future pacing exercise in, in psychobabble speak. <laughs> um, on, the last, on the last page of your handouts, uh, let me see where are we, on the second to last page, there's a title called January 2016 and I want you to write down in the in the present tense as if we were speaking if we if you and I were sitting across a coffee table in a coffee shop in January 2016 one year from now I want you to tell me in your own words on on your paper you don't have to share it if you want to you can but I want you to tell me in the present tense I'm so happy and excited because during the last 12 months, I did this, I made this happen, I'm celebrating that. I'm so happy and grateful that this has happened in my business. So just take a few minutes to imagine yourself in January 2016. You're sitting opposite me in a coffee shop, we're having a chat and you're telling me what an amazing year you've had. So write down what that looks like for you. And I'll pop the music back on and stop my dog barking.
Just keep writing for as long as you need to. Wonderful. Just give you a few more minutes. Thanks, Marie, Chris, Leslie and Sheila. Well done. Give, a, give the others a few more minutes. Wonderful, wonderful guys, thank you. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. So I'm going to go into your questions now um, and just open up the questions and open up the lines if anybody wants to speak to me. Um, I want to know first of all, did you find that useful? Does anybody want to say anything? Does anybody want to come on and talk to me on the call? If you do, just put your hand up using your control panel on the right-hand side there. If you don't have a microphone or you don't, um, you don't want to come on, that's okay. Just let me know. Did you, did you find that exercise useful? Great, Sheila. That's great. Do you feel like you've got something to go on now? Do you feel like you've got something to aim for? Great, Chris. It made you think. That was the idea. I hope I made you think. It's not often we give ourselves the time to do this. It's not often that we allow ourselves to actually dream about what we want. We're so busy in the day-to-day -day thing and kind of fighting fires and reacting to what's going on. It's actually quite difficult to find time to think. Great. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, Michael says he found it very useful because, as you said, it made me more emotionally involved in my business. 2016, difficult, yes. However, our calendar is filling about two times faster than in 2014. We're almost filled for October 2015 weekends. Fantastic. Great. New guest children policies would have been in place should, and should pay off with more positive guest feedback. Wonderful, Tom. Yes, absolutely. Marie says it was helpful to attach the emotion to the action versus st stating an action. Yes, it, it makes all the difference if you, can, if, you, if you feel emotionally involved with it. And the way to do that is to just keep on digging to, into the question, what does that mean for me? And what does that mean? And what does that mean? And then when you're thinking about, you know, what happens if, this, if I don't reach my goals? And really dig into that. And what would that mean? And then how would that be a problem? Just keep digging. Lovely, lovely. Okay, a lot of changes this year, Chris. Lovely, very useful to learn about making an emotional connection with goals, Marilyn. Yes. Okay, is it Martine jablonski Kaur? Martine, are you Martine or Martin? I don't know if you're a man or a woman. I'm so sorry. I can't tell from your name. Just tell me if you're a, a girl or a boy. My, I am receiving your comments. I am, yes. Okay. 
just let me know, Mark, is it, you've got M-A-R-T-I-N-N, it looks like, uh, Martin, you're a girl, oh, how lovely, <laughs> fantastic, so is it Martina, is it Martina, is that how you say it, I hope I'm doing a good French accent there, fantastic, okay, fabulous, thank you so much for all your lovely comments and for getting involved and really kind of you know, getting active in the process is the key. Rather, so many people just sit on the sidelines and don't do anything and just listen and just, because more information isn't going to do it, is it? More information is never going to be the answers, never going to be the answer. It's the action. So when you take action and you get involved and then you, you start to move towards something, it's like you have to be in action before anything can happen. So Martin is the French name, but I use Martin as a play on words. Oh, yes, great, great, great. Okay, Thomas, you're so welcome. Great to see you here, Tom. <laughs> With your trains, fantastic. All right, okay. So, thank you so much for your, your questions. So here's how... Okay, next, next thing then. Here's how you, you get in that interaction. What's the one thing that you will do in the next seven days to get started on the road to your successful path to your goal? What is the one thing you're going to do in the next seven days? And I want you to commit to, commit to doing this. Can make this commitment to yourself that you're going to do this thing. So pop that in the questions box or, and write it down on your handouts as well. What is the one thing you will do in the next seven days to get you started on your successful path to your goal? I don't think we need any more music for this. So I want to know what you're going to commit to in the next seven days. So Patricia, I'm going to read out your commitments. This is fantastic. Patricia is going to send a new special offer to her past guests for Valentine's celebration and a newsletter to prospects. Fantastic, Patricia. Okay, Sheila is going to join her local chamber of commerce. And what will that mean for you, Sheila? What will that mean? Okay, what's the object, the objective of joining your local chamber of commerce? Put that down. Chris is going to plan a calendar of blogging subjects and begin a weekly plan. Fantastic. Ray Raymond is going to get his website redone to WordPress. Fantastic. Joe is going to review all his costs. Okay, so how will you know when you've done that, Joe? What will that mean to you when you've done that? How will that be the step to your goal? You've got to link the two. You've got to link the action step to your goal. Okay, Martine is saying, oh, this is interesting, Martine. To be honest, I don't know, as I don't want to harass my guests. They know I give tours. Mm. Okay. How do you know that you're harassing your guests, Martine? How do you know that? Is that a belief? Is that what you think? Do you know that you're harassing them? Marie's going to adjust her rates by raising her weekend rates and holiday rates, as do all of my neighboring competitors. Brilliant. i got to say, if you have not put your prices up this year, if you don't put your prices up annually, you're slipping behind. You have to put your prices up every year just to keep pace with inflation, not to make more money. Because everything goes up every year. Everyone knows that. So Martin is saying, I have put promotions on, on the something. Okay, you missed off that last bit, Martin. So Chris Mason is saying, I've been doing a monthly newsletter for two years now and my guests love it. It's not harassment. Absolutely it's not. They want to hear from you. And Patricia, who's, who's been working with me on one of my other programs uh, just before Christmas, she put a comment on earlier, Patricia from Morocco, she put a comment here earlier saying that, um, hold on, I'll just read it to you. This is a myth about harassing your guests, you know? We're in business. We have to make money. It's, it's the lifeblood of our business. So let me see what Patricia said earlier about what uh, results she'd achieved from making offers to past guests. 
Yeah, she said she, the, the thing that worked for her in 2014 was that she developed special offers to be sent to past customers, and she had a lot of success with that. You know, if you're shy about selling, then you're, you're, you're not going to be in business very long. I hate to break that to you, because we're in, the business, we're in business and we need to sell. Sales is the lifeblood of your business. And if your guests don't want to hear from you, then, then if you're doing it properly and you're using a proper email provider, which I hope you are, then they have the opportunity to vote with their fingers and click the unsubscribe button, and then you just need to let them go. Okay, don't be afraid of doing that. Okay, let me just go back to the current questions. I've got the big questions box open now. Okay, Michael is saying, I'm going to begin to get my accounts up to date so that I can renegotiate with my bank. Brilliant, brilliant. Joe is saying there should be savings in doing a few things differently. Brilliant. Okay, so how many, how much savings are you looking to make, Joe? Let's get really specific here. The more specific we can get, the more we can get attached to it. Um, Sheila, what is a reasonable rate increase per year to combat inflation? It depends where you are in the world, but I put my prices up 5% every year. Uh, Martine, I have sent an email with the booking confirmation. If they don't ask, I don't dare to suggest again. Ooh. Martine, we need to talk. <laughs> you really must, you really must uh, get, brush up your selling skills, absolutely, if you want to uh, make more money or stay in business. Uh, Tom's saying some staff training about personal interaction with guests. It's okay, but really needs improvement. It needs to be polished a bit. Um, by the way, Thomas is saying uh, Raymond will love WordPress. Yes, yes, he will. We all love WordPress, don't we? <laughs> um, yes, Tom, so what are you going to do? What's your action step about getting some staff training about personal interaction with guests? Let's get specific about the, the next move that you're going to make. Barry saying, I liked your comments about my annual newsletter. Oh, Barry, is it you? <laughs> yes, that was amazing. I loved it that you sent it to me. I'm, not, I'm on lots of your newsletters. <laughs> I'm, I'm on lots of your newsletter lists, so um, I may even be on yours. <laughs> and when I get your newsletters, I just, I just do love to comment. I hope that's all right with you, but I really want to give you some feedback. I'm going to give you a couple of pointers about your newsletters right here and now as a, as a special bonus as we're still here together, and we've got a bit of time. Your newsletter is not a great big long rambling thing about you, okay? It, what, it, what it does, it, it serves the purpose of getting people back to your website, okay? You've got to get people to your website, and the purpose of your marketing, all of it, is to get people to your website and then book a room. That's why we're here, isn't it? That's why we're in business. And if your marketing is not doing that for some reason, then you've got to re-examine that. You've got to reevaluate that. So if you're sending out a newsletter, I want a short sentence or two about something that's interesting to me, and I want to know what the benefits are to me, and then I want to click here and a link back to your website to a specific page. Don't take me to your home page and make me, make me find my own way. Take me by the hand and take me to the place where I'm going to find out more information. Okay? That's a special tip for your newsletter. I don't, I don't want rambling on newsletters all about you. I want to know the benefits to me, the benefits to me of, coming, of interacting with you and coming back to you. I hope that makes sense. Well done, Barry. You put them to use and, and let me know what happens. So Chris is saying, today people expect to hear from, from business via the email route. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. People are waiting to hear from you. Um, I don't know if you've heard this story before. I've told it on previous webinars, but if you weren't with me, if you have heard it before, I apologize. But um, my daughter and I went to the Hyatt in London, in uh, Portman Square in London last summer. And we had a girly weekend, and they were lovely. It was a five-star hotel, and it was a fantastic experience. And they were so lovely, all smiles, and the service was brilliant. And, and when we left, when we checked out, they said, oh, do come back again. And I said, yes, we'd love to. It was, we had a great time. And, you know, I never heard from them again. Now, people like the Hyatt can afford to do that because, you, they, you know, they're in the business of just selling rooms, getting heads in beds. But we can't afford to do that. We cannot afford to let those precious guests slip away. We worked hard to get them to our B&B, &B, to our establishment. We worked very hard. We maybe paid a commission to get them there. 
we may be paid for them to come. So we can't let them go. We absolutely must build a relationship with them and have them come back and have them refer us. It's one of the, the, the pillars, the three pillars of a successful small hospitality business. Okay, what else we got here? Martine is saying, promotions on the website, maybe send an email to my former guests. I have done that in the past years and it worked. Great, fantastic, we'll do it again this year. Special offers for returning guests. Absolutely. If it worked, Martine, do it again. Uh, Raymond saying, I've got a company doing my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn marketing, and they're going to get more involved in my marketing, including Infusionsoft. Fantastic, Raymond. You and I are, are working together anyway, so I will certainly have some input on that for you. It's all got to be joined up. Your marketing has to be joined up. I'm giving you lots of nuggets here. I hope it's useful. Got to reduce the OTAs. You have indeed, Raymond. It's okay for to pay once to get the guests, but you don't want to pay again when they come again. You want to, you want to be building your own database. Yep, that's me, Barry. <laughs> what is a proper email address, Leslie? You need a proper email service provider. The, the one that I recommend, if you're not into internet marketing yet, and I hope you will be in the future, the one that I recommend, if, you, if you're new to this, is MailChimp, because it's free. Check it out. Martine, maybe offer a free half day. Okay, we're running out of time here. This is fantastic. I love these action steps. That's fantastic. Okay, MailChimp, Leslie, MailChimp.com. It's an email service provider. The reason that you can't send emails, you mustn't send emails from your Gmail account, your Hotmail account, or even your Outlook account. When you're sending, you know, bulk emails, it's illegal because you don't give people the opportunity to unsubscribe, which means to stop receiving the, your emails, and that is illegal. You'll get away with it for just a few times, but, you know, it's unprofessional. Apart from not being legal, it's unprofessional. MailChimp, MailChimp, like chimpanzee. Okay, but you know, if you are, if you are operating a you know professional business, you really need to be getting on board with technology in terms of communications and marketing and your social media um, and everything that goes with it. And your marketing absolutely must be joined up. So, do we have? Okay, so we need to wrap up now. Um, I'm loving your interaction. Thank you so much. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, here's how to get my help if you need some help. Let me just close this questions box for a moment. Let's recap first of all. You know what worked in 2014? You know what didn't work in 2014? You now know what you want, why you want it, and what that means to you. And you also know what will happen if you don't reach this goal. So you have that emotional connection to the goal. You have your first doing step that you can accomplish in the next seven days. Make a commitment to do that one step that's linked to your goal. Not, it's not just a random step out of the blue. It's got to be connected to that goal that you've identified today. So here's how to get my help. If you want some help on your path, book a free consultation with me by going to this um, URL. It's a short link. I have limited spots available. I'm going to put this in the uh, questions box so that you can actually click on it. Oops. Can't spell. Okay, so that is in the, there's a link in the questions box, I think. Should be there. Let me put it in here. Oh, no, it's in here. Okay, right. HTTP forward slash forward slash bit dot Lee YH hyphen consult. So let's start the new year off. Let's start the new year off with a bang. <laughs> and let's get going, marching towards those goals and having a really, really successful 2015 so that when we do meet over coffee in January 2016, as we may do, you'll be able to tell me that wonderful story of what you did in 2015. How cool would that be? How much would you love that? So there we go. 
You are so welcome, Marilyn. You are so welcome. There's lots more where that came from. So if you want some help, do go to that link, book a, a free consultation with me so that I can get to know what your challenges are and I can give you some more help if you should, if you need it and if you choose to work with me, that's great and if you don't, that's great too. Um, it's not for everybody. Um, I have various ways that you can work with me, various programs uh, at all price points to suit any budget. So, but you don't have to work with me. I would just love to have a chat with you and find out what you need. So book a free consultation and you um, and and let's get let's get moving. Um, <laughs> I'd love to come to Paris. Thank you, Martine. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Okay, thanks. that's fantastic, Thomas. Book, it, book yourself in a free consultation and we'll chat, okay? Fabulous, fabulous. You're so welcome, Sheila. You're so welcome. So it's, we've, we've been uh, almost an hour, so um, I'm so glad that you, you came today. I want, to, I want to thank you. I want to honor you. I want to salute you for taking this time. And I'm glad that you're excited, Marie, to get going on your goals. I want you to be excited. It's the only way to achieve them. You've got to be absolutely passionate about what you want to achieve. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for showing up today and for taking this time to, to work on your business for yourself. So um, if you have any other questions, you can always get me at Yvonne at bedandbreakfastcoach.com, but I'm looking forward to seeing you on a free consultation where we can chat some more and uh, get down to what you really need. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the music. I'm sorry about the, the jumpy slides. Uh, but it's, it's all part of the process. <laughs> so I wish you a very good night and, um, and have a great day. Bye for now.